Have you ever gone to bed so confident and motivated about what you were going to tackle the next day, only to wake up in the morning and find out that your motivation had evaporated overnight? If this sounds like you, you're not alone. Today we're going to be talking about what to do when you have no motivation, so stick around. Hey everybody, I'm Jess from JessDickerson.com and I'm helping you go from stress to success by giving you the tools to be more confident, more motivated, and less stressed. By the end of this video, you're going to have three ways to get motivated again and four ways to use that motivation and turn it into action. Plus, if you stay to the end, I'm going to be giving you a bonus tip to help quit doing that one thing that stops so many people from succeeding. And remember, if you want to be the first to know when I publish a new video, remember to hit the subscribe button below. Today we're going to be talking about motivation. And motivation is a feeling. It comes, it goes. Some days you're super fired up to do everything and the next day you can't peel yourself off the couch. If you've ever been there, type yes in the comments. So what the hell is up with that? I mean, why can't we just keep motivated all the time? The reason is that motivation is a feeling. Just like happiness or sadness or frustration, it comes, it goes, and we're not in that state all the time. We don't actually need motivation to accomplish something. I mean, if we're being honest, I'm never really going to be motivated to do the dishes, but I still get them done. But it's so much easier to accomplish something if you're motivated. Life gets boring sometimes, but that doesn't mean that the laundry is not going to stop piling up or that you don't have to do that thing at work that you're so sick of doing every single week. And that thing is meetings, right? Can we all agree that it's meetings? The human brain has a built-in reward system and the rewards are given out anytime you're interested in something and you're learning something new. If you've ever picked up a new hobby or a new interest and you simply could not get enough of it, then you were experiencing the reward system firsthand. That's why a new workout program, a new job, even a new relationship are all exciting at the beginning because everything is new. But eventually, after you've been at it for a while, the newness starts to wear off and the reward system is no longer kicking in. After a while, your brain is going to want something new to get excited about. This is the typical shiny object syndrome where you jump from thing to thing to thing that you're super excited about and then as soon as you stop being excited about it, you skip to the next thing. The thing is that lack of consistency is usually the reason that we don't achieve goals. And so in order to keep going, we need to find a way to maintain the motivation even after the newness has worn off. The first way to find your motivation again is to play to your strengths. Yeah, we all have weaknesses we have to work on, but if you're always working on your weaknesses, you're going to start getting frustrated, you're not going to make the level of progress that you want, and you might lose confidence in your abilities. Working on things that you're good at actually boosts your confidence and it's something you can get excited about because you tend to whip through it really quick or it seems a lot easier than the other things that you were working on and you tend to build up a little bit of excitement to work on something that you're actually good at. If you're struggling to motivate yourself to do something, see if there's a way that you can flip the project around so that you're playing to your strengths or Maybe there's something at work that you're not particularly good at, you don't really enjoy, and you've lost all your motivation for it. Maybe you can swap projects with somebody else so that you take something off their hands they don't want to do, and you give them this thing that isn't really working out. This can also work for something like exercise or nutrition. Maybe you really hate lifting, and that's okay. I mean, you need to put it in your program somewhere, but it doesn't have to be your sole focus. Maybe there's another way that you can get something else into your program that you're good at and still sneak in the lifting on the side. Maybe you do a quick lifting thing after you do 20 minutes of running because that's your favorite thing to do. So play to your strengths where you can and if you're really struggling with motivation, see how you can flip it around so that you can start working on the things that you're actually really good at and boost your confidence. The second way to get your motivation back is to experiment. Being stuck is a surefire way to lose all your motivation. Nothing sucks the energy out of you faster than boredom. Look at the things that you don't have any motivation around and see if you're kind of stuck in a rut. Are you eating the same things every single day and you're just tired of it? Are you doing the same workout every single day? Does your workday look exactly the same all the time? 
Then in these places where you're really just bored and that's why you don't have any motivation, trying to find a way that you can incorporate something new and exciting in it to bring the life back into it. If you're sick of eating the same foods all the time, see if you can't find a new recipe, just one to try every week. Whatever the area is that you're lacking motivation, just look and see if maybe it's just that you're bored and not that you're lacking motivation and see what you can do to spice things up a little bit. The third way to find your motivation again is to find your purpose. This is the absolute surefire way to get your motivation back again. If you've got kids, I'm sure you've been asked a million times, why, why do I have to do that? Okay, maybe not exactly in that same voice, but something along those lines. Nothing sucks the motivation out of you faster than being forced to do a meaningless task. I mean, think about it. If you don't have a good reason to get up at 5 a.m. and work out, are you gonna get up in the cold in the dark? I know I'm not, I'm not a morning person, let's just be clear. If your boss keeps giving you busy work with no clear reason or purpose, how long are you really gonna wanna stay at that job? Meaning matters. Figure out why you are doing something and then put reminders all around you to keep you focused. Some people find it helpful to create a vision board, a bunch of images that they compile together, could be a Pinterest board, could be pictures from a magazine glued to a poster. These are images of what they want their life to look like, what they're working towards. Find some way to remind yourself of why. It can be whatever works for you. You could use a vision board, or it could be one picture, a journal, a mantra, a list. Then whenever your motivation is low, you can go back to that one thing and remind yourself of why you're working on it so that you can boost your motivation again. If you're thinking about something constantly, even if it's guilt, like you feel guilty because you didn't get your workout in today, that's a sign of motivation. It might not feel like that whole fired up and raring to go, but you're still showing that you're motivated to accomplish the end goal. Wanting the end results is motivation. It's just that you're not excited about doing the actions that will get you to your goals. The biggest issue is that the same brain that's excited, that came up with these goals, that can't wait to get there, is also the brain that's gonna come up with a 100 excuses about why you don't need to do the action right now. In order to get yourself to do the things that you need to do to accomplish your goals, here are four tips to turn that motivation into action. The first tip is to make very specific choices. Make a plan. I don't mean a vague plan like, I'm gonna get up tomorrow morning and do a workout. <coughs> Too vague. It needs to be specific. I'm gonna get up tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. I'm gonna eat a banana, I'm gonna drink a glass of water, then I'm gonna head out the door and go for a two mile run. And then when I come home, I'm gonna drink a chocolate protein shake as a reward for my action. That will actually help cement your new habit, but that's another video. The second step is to create the right environment. You've heard of out of sight, out of mind, and now we need to use that tactic, but in reverse. So if we're sticking to the whole morning run routine, then making the right environment and probably involves putting out your running clothes and your shoes where you will see them as soon as you wake up and sticking your alarm in the bathroom or your closet or at least across the room from you so that you have to get up and walk past those exercise clothes to turn off your alarm and then you're up and then you're getting dressed. The third step is to find an accountability partner. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I will totally do X, Y, Z for someone else, but I can't find time to do it for myself. Use this personality trait to your advantage and get yourself a partner in crime. Find someone that will meet you at 6 a.m. and go for that run. Or get a business accountability partner who you'll hold responsible for their actions and they'll hold you responsible for yours. This way, every time you're doing something for your goals, you're actually helping somebody with theirs and that's something that you can focus on when you can't motivate yourself to do it for yourself. The fourth step is to put it on the calendar. I don't know about how your dentist works, but mine is scheduling those appointments six months out. And when I get that appointment, I put it on the calendar. When that date comes up, I make sure I don't have any conflicts and my butt is in their waiting room on time. That's the power of putting something on your calendar. 
So when you find something you're going to commit to, write it down in your calendar, give it the time it needs, and when it comes up, do it. And here's the bonus tip that will really help you get where you wanna go. Don't get sucked into mental arguing. I know the struggle is real when it comes to second guessing whether we should or shouldn't do something, whether we have the energy, whether this is really important or not. You could have done everything that I just talked about and when it comes time, your brain could be like, oh hell no, not today. Before you even start anything, before you even put this on the calendar, you need to make an agreement with yourself that there will be no mental arguing. I do this with my kids all the time. I'll say, hey, you can play computer until bedtime, but when I tell you to turn it off, there can't be any arguing. You have to do this with yourself and your inner child. When the time comes up, there can be no arguing, no deliberating, no negotiating, no putting it off till this afternoon or tomorrow, or that will turn into the 13th of never. And remember, you don't have to want to do something to actually do it. You just need to remember why you're doing it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please go ahead down and like and subscribe for your weekly dose of confidence, motivation, and stress relief. If you're interested in further reading about this topic, I'm going to be putting some links to helpful blog posts in the show notes as well. If you want to be the first to know about new programs and videos, please go ahead over to my website, justdickerson.com, and sign up for my newsletter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.